Our lesson today comes from beloved Lord Lanto, and he says to us, to those joyous hearts who would expand the joy of God, our subject is the spreading of the network of joy, the antithesis of sorrow in the domain of consciousness and its communication into the world of form. Lord Lanto says, when the individual monad can willingly give up the personal self beyond the point of test in a genuine act of surrender, he is soon magnetized to the God ideal of spreading in the world domain the marvelous activity of vibrant joy. Joy in self, joy in nature, joy in opportunity, joy in service, joy in music, joy in art, and joy even in the process of purifying the self. Every facet of life takes on the aspect of challenge to those who daily strive to be more like him. But this is not a challenge of discomfort. This is one of hope. The very fact that the individual can improve regardless of his station, that he can change his concepts, his vibratory action and the content of his mind as he would his garments is a sign of hope and a portent of the light. Energy fields are magnificent when they are properly qualified, for they not only surround the creator of the energy field with his own vibration of bliss, but according to the law of attraction, they also magnetize the vibrations of happiness and joy from many parts of the world. And I want to interject here in all the personal development programs and spiritual teachings that I have followed over the last many decades of my life here on this planet. There is a statement that is shared over and over again that aligns with what Lord Lanto is teaching us here. And it is like attracts like when we exude joy we attract joy when we send out that vibration of happiness and joy as lord lanto says we attract that happiness the same goes for abundance and prosperity when we share a light of abundance and prosperity with the world we attract that where energy goes energy flows Orlando continues and he says, we acknowledge that the reverse is also true and seldom do people take into account the fact that from time to time they are surrounded with entities, entities of fear, of doubt and of grief, which seek to invade the aura only because by their own attitudes, individuals create the climate that attracts these outsiders. In the matter of moods, then, we would suggest to every student who pursues God's happiness, whenever he is invaded by a feeling that is less than God happiness, a feeling of discomfort or disquietude, that he begin to look for the cause first in his own subconscious mind and in the centering of his attention around negative ideas which he may have allowed to enter his world, and secondly, in the person of masquerading and malevolent entities. The nature of invading entities is such that whenever an individual seeks to improve himself by engaging in religious worship, by attending a constructive lecture or concert, or by reading religious literature, the vibratory action of the higher pursuit makes the entity extremely uncomfortable. The entity, unwilling to relinquish his hold on the life stream, will then project to his consciousness a feeling of discomfort or unhappiness. And this, he will assure the individual, is directly attributed, attributable to the function in which the individual is involved. In this manner, many sincere souls are either stopped on the path or they are prevented from obtaining the benefits of higher meditation. Thus, through their susceptibility to invading entities, they are deprived of the opportunity to receive transcendent blessings. 
This is why spiritual protection is necessary for those who would continue to progress on the upward path. Progression, protection, not only through the knowledge I am conveying, but also through decrees, through prayer, and through the determination to do the will of God, no matter what the argument of opposition may be. When you are able to cast out from the self the influences of discarnate entities, whether these be departed relatives, friends, or enemies who may be magnetized to your person, when you are able to invoke the protection from on high that will insulate you from the malice of those whom you may not even know are your enemies, whether embodied or disembodied, you will find yourself making spiritual progress at a more rapid pace. Because of the increasing threat of witchcraft in the United States as well as in the world, spiritual aspirants must exercise caution and they should learn to weigh the evidence before they credit all of their failures or seeming failures to themselves. Witchcraft has a subtle allure for those who are not grounded in spiritual knowledge and who do not understand the karmic penalties that accrue from such dangerous practices. Often practitioners of witchcraft use their powers to launch a general form of attack against any who tries to escape from the mass miasma. And at this point, the messenger recommended the reading of the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis in connection with the series on understanding yourself. And you can have, find that booklet in the library, the Ascended Master Library. There is something, Lord Lanto continues, he says, there is something about progress that always engages the teeth of men's ego. When others begin to progress, they often enter into feelings of jealousy. Jesus described this human propensity in his statement, Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. Many in the Orthodox churches are naive concerning these facts. They are entirely too stand pat. In other words, they refuse to change their position or opinion in matters of self. Quite frankly, as you have been told in this series, the self is little understood. This is why people often work against their own best interest and against the best interests of humanity. Why they are so easily captivated by the idea of massive social gain and why the dark forces are able to create so much unrest in the world making men and women think they can gain spiritually as well as materially, th materially through forms of government control. The ideal society is that which evolves out of higher consciousness when the individual opens the door of his being to God without reserve. In such moments of personal contact with life, the entire being of man becomes as a mouth pressing itself against the infinite in order to receive the subtle nourishment that floods into the hungry soul. Because the grace that comes from on high is so creative, so inspirational, so filled with depth and height and volume, it literally overwhelms the being of man and spilling over the lip of life, it floods forth as the impulse to be a benefactor to the race. Such impulse must be guarded under God control and channeled constructively in order to protect the self and the highest nature in others. Each person should realize that the higher intelligence within himself is capable of making accurate decisions as to when he should speak and when he should be silent when he should offer a helping hand and when he should withhold it. There are times when nothing is as important as a physical gesture of assistance to another. And at other times, 
there is nothing so dangerous. Some of the best gifts that can be given to men are inward gifts, such as the communication of the highest vibrations of hope and comfort. The consciousness of the individual should become like a grail, and the knowledge that flows into the grail consciousness should draw more and more of the regenerating Christ consciousness into the domain of the self. Certainly it is true that if a man ask of God bread, he will not give him a stone. Therefore, consider the fact that constructive endeavor always receives the necessary support spiritually, morally, and materially proportionate as one accepts the highest sense of his mission in a spiritual manner. And then we have a quote by Lord Lanto from Acts chapter 20, verse 35. And the statement goes, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Lord Lanto says, though, Yet unless men receive, they cannot give. Therefore, the words allotted portion must be understood as the grace of God on deposit in the great causal body of each individual. Man can expand as he is able to receive them, the highest judgments and qualities of God. He can grow in grace <clears throat> and in the knowledge of truth. He can become tomorrow a greater servant than he is today. Yet the foundation stones of the temple must be laid while consciousness is held in readiness. This is done by an act of willing to do whatsoever must be done in the furtherance of the kingdom of God, both within and without. The self needs to expand. In order to expand, men need to receive. But all who receive need also to give. For if man becomes an inlet with no outlet, he will eventually become a parasite on the world body. Man must qualify his energy with divine love, just as the pulsing joy of God vivaciously entices all of nature to perform her wondrous feats. Her miracles of temporal reality, immortalized as they recycle over and over again. Thus shall the individual realize that one day the true meaning of his life will be found in the spiritual interchange between the microcosm and the microcosm that is known as flow. Through this process, the allness of man flows into the allness of God, and the allness of God flowing into the allness of man brings about an exchange of the pulsations of identity which make the humblest soul a king of victory, and the most exalted to bow in joyous humility. Truly, he has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Truly, the living God is crowned in every atom. Truly, each man is the son of the eternal one. Move on then to understand that which you can be, for out of the expectancy of hope is born the implementation of faith that establishes the borders of self-right where charity is. When the meaning of true love is known, it is found to recreate that supreme moment. <clears throat> it is found to recreate that supreme moment when the innocent soul cried out, with divine wonder, because thou art, O God, I am. And I want to invite you to repeat that with me a few times. Because thou art, O God, I am. Because thou art, O God, I am. Because thou art, O God, I am. What a joyous thought. Beloved Lord Lanto closes his dictation and he says, Thus we seek the links of identity, intelligence, power, and love 
uniting all to the oneness that is God. Now let's hear some words from the angels of the cosmic cross of white fire and the ruby ray. This dictation was delivered in September on September 14, 1997, and it's titled The Joy of Forgiveness. And it starts out as follows. Angels of the cosmic cross of white fire and the ruby ray, angels of light descending from all octaves of the universe, draw nigh to earth. O oh, angels, draw nigh to earth, for it is the hour of the coming of the Lord, the holy Christ self. O oh, ye people, receive these angels now. O oh, ye people, know the internalization of this flame of the ruby ray, this flame of the white fire. Thus we celebrate the inner sanctum of our Lord and Savior, that we might follow him to be his servants forever and forever. We come now, we touch you with the fire of the ruby ray, with the fire of the whiteness of the glory of God. Enter in, O oh beloved, enter in. Our message again and again, accelerate, intensify, rise into God dominion. And I say we can turn that into a mantra affirmation. So again, I invite you to give this with me. I will read it as a mantra and then ask you to join me as we give it together. We can say, I accelerate, I intensify, I rise into God dominion. I accelerate, I intensify, I rise into God dominion. I accelerate, I intensify, I rise into God dominion. The angels continue. They say, O oh, blessed of all hearts, O oh, blessed of all hearts, we, the angels of the white fire and the ruby ray, are here to tend you. And this tending will commence from the second quadrant of the year to the third and move on to the fourth. And aren't we blessed that we have just entered into the second quadrant of our year? The angels continue and they say, in each quadrant of the year, we shall intensify the sacred fire of being. We shall come, we shall assist you, we shall bring you vials of mercy. In this hour, vials of mercy as violet flame are upon you as you continue your vigil this night. For you truly need the violet flame of forgiveness for yourself and all light bearers of the world. This is so needed, beloved. Therefore, let us give that call of forgiveness again and again and again and again as you give your decrees to mercy's flame. You would do well to think of your past, present and future as you meditate and ask yourself, is there someone whom I have wronged from whom I have not asked for forgiveness? If so, Approach that one when the service has ended, and even if your concern is just a little thing, embrace that one and say, I will not defile your being, your God, or your heart flame again. This, my friend, I vow to you. Please forgive me and let us walk on the road of life together. Know this joy, beloved, for it is your liberation. It will liberate you whether you are harboring sin, disease, or death, or the evils of the underworld. Harbor the light and the greater light until you ascend on that light and you say to yourself, what a waste of time it was to dislike this one or to dislike that one when our God is the indwelling God who lives within all. We call upon the Buddha of the ruby ray, we call upon those who serve the ruby ray, and we tell you that for those of you who can contain the ruby ray of God and give the ruby ray calls, that ray is a most extraordinary manifestation. In his service to the sons and daughters of God, the Buddha of the ruby ray walks from the center of the earth to the surface and returns once again to the center. He is a magnificent being. We are in awe of him. We move with him. He is a being that you will want to get to know, for you can only benefit from his presence. Let all consuming joy 
fill your hearts. Let sorrow cease. Let pain cease. Let suffering cease. Let the violet flame entwined with the ruby ray be the source of your being as consolation, as transformation, as beatitude. O blessed ruby ray fire of God, heal the heart. Heal the heart that is broken. Heal the heart that is saddened. Heal the heart that has lost a loved one. Heal the hearts, beloved. Heal the hearts. That which we give you today is for your internalization of the ruby ray and for the filling of the cups of your cells and molecules with ruby ray essence, essence of being and essence of the Buddha of the ruby ray. Contemplate this. The ascended lady masters are assembling here. They bring greetings of love and joy and the intensity of the ruby ray. They move in the vastness of time and space. They come to nurture you and to restore you to your spiritual mother who has been with you in this and in past lives. They come to heal the fragments of your soul for you have not truly had the oneness and the wholeness that you thought you would receive from your early earthly mother. The lady masters caress you. They cradle you in their arms. They use their chakras to heal the records, beginning with conception and your, of your sense of separation from God. They draw you back to your wholeness, back to your origin in our Father, Mother God. For everyone on earth, there is a special abiding mother presence, a lady master who rocks you and cradles you and cares for you. This lady master heals you at a very deep level, for her healing comes from the very core of the ruby ray. In the very depths of your being, where you have known sorrow and pain, this ray fills, fills in the gaps, does its work, and then seals you as you rise to a holier place. This we have done, and this we increase in intensity on behalf of you who know the violet flame and the ascended masters. You who know the path and realize that it is entirely possible that an ascended lady master may come to you and comfort you and bring you to the highest conception of your own true being. It is the work of the mother to tell her children what they can do if they will study and work hard. And this they ought to do. This is a process of alchemy. It is the violet flame entwined with a ruby ray. Breathe deeply and take in the sweetness of the love of the mother. The laws of karma have reviewed your participation in darshan and they have directed these divine mothers to come to you. The laws of karma have recommended this for they see how you have blocked the pain in your four lower bodies and thus it does not move. It is like the crumbling Berlin Wall. Some wanted to remain and others would bring it down. Even so, some parts of you want to retain your pain, your out of alignment state, and others want to transmute it. That is why the white fire, the violet flame, and the ruby ray of God are needed. These will reconcile those differences and restore wholeness. The Ascended Lady Masters serve with beloved Omega, with beloved Vesta, and with a Goddess Maru. As you meditate, think of the most beautiful presence of Mother that you can outpicture. Rejoice to greet this beloved Mother. Do not see her as a human mother. She see her as an Ascended Lady Master Mother. When you are in the arms of your Ascended Lady Master Mother, you are so very safe. She tucks your secrets in her heart, your unspoken pains, 
words too hard to say aloud. This ascended lady master will never betray you, will never lead you astray, and she will always care for you. And this ascended lady master will be with you through your childhood and adolescence, through your teens and twenties and so on, so that your karmic burdens can be transmuted by the violet flame and soul fragments drawn back to their very proper place. To ascend, you must be whole. Thus the lords of karma thought it best, of the best of possible gifts, to go give you an ascended lady master mother, until all unresolved issues with the mother are resolved. Accept this blessed mother, whoever she may be, and resolve that you will not be stuck or left behind. For this blessed mother will enfold you, and your cares will drop away, and in their place will arise the white fire, the ruby ray, and the violet flame. And one day you will say to yourself, I have no more sorrow, I have no more pain, I have only joy. I know my real and eternal mother. I send love to the one who bore me in this life and all past lives, for I know an eternal mother who will be there for me. And when I am fulfilled and full come of age, I myself will be a divine mother. Now, as you pursue your healing, you will have the comfort and the consolation of the mother presence until by and by your universe will be filled with those with whom you have had resolution and joy. And this will lead you to unfold worlds of divine love. Let your peace be upon you this day and let it continue unto your victory. Beloved Father, Mother God, we are so grateful for this teaching on joy and the joy of forgiveness. And we thank you, beloved heavenly host, beloved masters, the seraphim and the cherubim, beloved Shiva and Lord Maitreya, we ask you and we thank you for your presence here. Thank you all. And may we eternally stand in your light and in the joy of God. In the name of the Father, the Mother, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it is done. Amen.